From the following information, calculate the share of minority shareholders and holding company in the pre-acquisition profits of a subsidiary company. So we are given the balance sheet of two companies, H Limited and S Limited. H Limited liabilities, equity shares of rupees 10 each fully paid up, it is 10 lakhs and 5 lakhs. Profit and loss account is 3 lakh, 3 lakh. And on the asset side, you have H Limited investments in S Limited to the extent of uh, 5 lakhs. So this is not a complete balance sheet, it is only the balance sheet extract. H Limited acquired 30,000 equity shares in S Limited on 1st April, I'm sorry, 1st July 2011. The profit and loss account of S Limited as on 1st April 2011 was 2 lakhs. Okay. Now what are the things we have to find out? First we have to find out what is the share of minority shareholder and holding company. Then in the pre-acquisition profits of the company. Okay. Then we are also given the date of acquisition and some other information. So first let's capture certain basic information. First, what is date of acquisition? That is when this company is gaining control. That is, who is the holding company here? H Limited. Subsidiary is S Limited. So when it is gaining that control, H Limited acquired 30,000 equity shares in S Limited on 1st July 2011. So we can say 1st July 2011 is the date of acquisition because if you look at the total shares of S Limited, it is 5 lakh divided by 10, it is 50,000. Of 50,000, 30,000 has been acquired by H Limited on 1st July 2011. It means they are gaining 60% control. So we, we can say 1st July 2011 is the date of acquisition. So what is going to be the pre-acquisition period and post-acquisition period? Pre-acquisition period is nothing but the period commencing from the beginning of the accounting year. In this case, it is going to be 1st April 2011 and it will go up to the date prior to the date of acquisition of control, which is 30th June 2011. This is about pre-acquisition period. Then what is post-acquisition period? Here the post-acquisition period is from the date of acquisition of control. Date of acquisition of control is 1st July 2011 and that goes up to end of that accounting year that is 31st March 2012. Now what about the share of a holding company or let's say share percentage of holding company. Holding company is having shares of 30,000. And this is out of 5 lakh divided by 10, 50,000 shares. So 30,000 out of 50,000 into 100, it means they are holding 60 percentage. Then what about minority shareholders? Minority shareholding percentage, if I express it is going to be remaining 20,000 shares. 20,000 divided by 50,000 into 100, they are holding 40 percentage. Now we should also find out the pre-acquisition share of profit. Okay, so how do we know? What is the profit of S Limited overall profit position as at the end of the year? Now this is the position on 31st March 2012. At the end of the year they have 3 lakh and at the beginning of the year their profit position was 2 lakhs. Now we will keep this in mind and we will try to find out what is the pre-acquisition and post-acquisition profit. Okay, so for that, first of all, we should open the profit and loss account to know what is the exact position. So let me do that. I'm going to open profit and loss account. What was the opening balance? Let's say on 1st April 2011, buy balance brought down, it was 2 lakhs. And we know at the end of the year, that is 31st March, 2012 to balance carry down it is 3 lakhs right here we have it is 3 lakhs it means during the year they have earned 1 lakh so this is just a balancing figure we'll say by profit earned during the year okay now let me close this 3 lakhs is closed 
now this 3 lakh got to be distributed or it should be divided between pre acquisition and post acquisition so let me take the position profit as on 31 3 12 it is this 3 lakhs now this 3 lakhs got to be divided as pre acquisition and post acquisition now this pre acquisition profit how do you know what is the pre acquisition profit this 2 lakh is the opening balance this was even before the acquisition because the date of control acquisition is 1st July 2011 whereas this was there on 1st April 2011 so of this 3 lakh the pre acquisition profit I am going to divide into 2 number one which was already there in the opening balance that is this 2 lakhs number two the company has earned something during the year that is 1 lakh but this 1 lakh can again be divided into two right because this 1 lakh is earned during the year but we have data of control acquisition as uh, 1st July 2011 it means there is a pre acquisition period from 1st April 2011 to 30th June 2011 it means on this 1 lakh 3 by 12 months is related to pre acquisition period so what I'm going to do I'm going to take 1 lakh but not entire 1 lakh is pre acquisition period on which only 3 by 12 goes to pre acquisition period and that works out to 25,000 right so we can say pre acquisition profit as nothing but sum of these two that is 2,25,000. So out of this 3 lakh, 2,25,000 goes to pre-acquisition profit. It means post-acquisition profit is 3 lakh minus 2,25,000. It is going to be 75,000. In this way, we have calculated the pre-acquisition profit and post-acquisition profit. But it is not going to stop here. This got to be distributed. That is, we have to distribute this between the holding company and the minority shareholders. Okay. Now, what is the holding company's share? Holding company has got 60% share and minority shareholders have got 40% share. It means of this 2,25,000, 60%, 2,25,000 multiplied by 60% that is 1,35,000 goes to holding company and 2,25,000 multiplied by 40% that is 90,000 goes to minority shareholders. Similarly, in the post acquisition profit of 75,000, 60% would go to holding company. So 75,000 into 60% is equal to 45,000. And of this 75,000, 40% would go to minority shareholders, that is 30,000. Now, why we are doing this segregation? As far as the minority shareholders is concerned, this pre and post does not make any difference. But when it comes to holding company, this pre acquisition profit would go to reduce the cost of investment. And this post acquisition profit would be created to their PNL or we'll be seeing how it is going to take its real shape. Okay. Now, this got to be presented in a statement form. So, let me show you how to present this in a statement form. I am going to have a statement where we will have particulars. I am going to have a two columns. One, a column for capital profit. The other one, we say revenue profit. Now, this company had a opening balance right opening balance of 2 lakhs now this opening balance was there even before h limited acquired this s limited so it is capital in nature we will take it under capital profit then s limited earned further profit of 1 lakh during the year of which 3 by 12 that is one fourth is related to pre acquisition period so still we call it as capital profit so item b profit earned during the year 
Now that profit earned during the year is splitted into capital profit and revenue profit. Capital profit is this 1 lakh into 3 by 12 that is 25,000. It means out of 1 lakh 25,000 is taken as capital profit. So remaining 75,000 is taken as revenue profit. So now we can have the total position. Total which is A plus B. Here it is 2 lakh 25,000 and here it is 75,000. This is nothing but the chart which we have prepared. Okay. So in this what is going to be the share of holding company? Share of holding company at 60%. So 2 lakh 25 into 60% that is 1 lakh 35,000. 75,000 into 60% it is 45,000 and share of minority shareholders at 40%, 2 lakh 25 into 40%, we have 90,000, 75,000 into 40%, we have 30,000.